So I can't tell who's out there. We're good. We're going. We'll take that as a yes. Uh, if you can drop in the chat sometimes things like, yeah, it's good. So my name is Ben Morse. My job is to be a developer advocate at Google, where we work to make the web uh, faster and more beautiful, easier for developers to use, easier for users to use. That's the idea. And it was before a full-time musician. You can see actually in the backdrop over here, this little guitar, the keyboard down there. This is my um, this small attic music studio. That's now where I live all the time because this is what we do these days. Sorry, I can't see you all in person in Austin, Texas. Hopefully you're all relaxing in your homes comfortably and enjoying the sessions so far. So this is a workshop version of the beginning web development with AMP course. We made three of these courses showing how to make sites using AMP. And actually you can do the first course by taking out all the stuff about what AMP is and the web and the philosophy behind AMP. And you can do this course in about an hour and a half and bit of the next course as well. So this is our goal today is to talk about AMP for a little bit, about the web for a little bit, and then to go ahead and get our hands dirty making our first ever AMP sites. I assume this is your first ever AMP sites. Um, have people used AMP before? Do you know what AMP is? Have you ever made a site with AMP before? If you can drop some uh, comments in the chat, assuming you're out there somewhere. <laughs> That way I can gauge your skill level, we can go from there. If you're feeling shy, I will just go on here with uh, the presentation and we'll get into the workshop and we'll take it from there. So it's really about the web. I mean, the web is a wonderful place full of fantastic things, but uh, the idea behind the AMP is to make it easier when you haven't got great connection, which happens a fair amount of the time. If you're in like a really, really nice area with nice Wi-Fi, you own a really nice phone, it may not be a problem. Websites may all load quickly for you with some exceptions, but for a lot of people, a lot of the time, it's not the case. If you're in a more developing country where connections are a little slower, then this often is a problem. Uh, in fact, the last stat I saw said that actually 40% of all connections made uh, by mobile phones worldwide are 2G. So if you have a lot of site over 2G, it's pretty slow. Even if you're in like an area with nice Wi-Fi, then you will often find yourself getting slow connections. If you're traveling somewhere in a more rural area, you may downgrade from 4G to 3G or something else like that. And also a lot of phones are not that high powered out there. If you've got the latest iPhone or Galaxy or Pixel or whatever, that's all wonderful. But a lot of phones being sold these days are cheaper and pretty underpowered. And these phones take a while to load up JavaScript, to parse it, execute things. And your very nice site with its large JS bundle may just be really janky and not reactive on someone else's phone. So you get problems like this. Things load slowly if you have too much code, too much stuff on your site. Uh, you make a pages that are unresponsive because you're trying to scroll around. The JavaScript is executing at the same time or the event listeners for a button haven't actually loaded up yet. And also a problem with the web on phones that AMP tries to make better is that you'll be looking at a site, you know, sitting there looking at some text, suddenly it jumps around because an ad has popped in and it's playing video and what you're, what you're reading has moved down on the screen or even more commonly an image drops in, an uh, embed of some sort drops in, and things shift around on the screen, making the content move around and also making the browser forced to re repaint the layout of the screen again and again. And it can be really hard to use certain sites this way. I found especially these days, now that I'm home a lot, I make a lot more food than I used to, and recipe sites are really guilty of this. Lots of ads and videos, and some are almost unusable. This is the kind of problem AMP was designed to fix. Uh, AMP makes it so that pages don't have these problems, basically. How does it do that? AMP is simply mostly, well, it's a few different things, but really it's mostly about web components. So web components, if you've used these before, are a way of adding new functionality that gets used to HTML. You have JavaScript that runs these new things. HTML is pretty old, it's been around for a long time. 
It was designed to describe documents. It wasn't designed to do like live functionality on websites. It was there to say, you know, this is a bold faced bit of text. This is a paragraph. This should be read. It wasn't there to say, this is an interactive menu. This is the Twitter embed. This is the mortgage calculator. Those things were not part of HTML and they're still not part of HTML even today. People add JavaScript to do all these things, which is fine. It works great. But if you add a lot of JavaScript, it makes things slow. So the goal of Web Components is to make these things simpler uh, by providing you these widgets that do the functionality for you that you had to write yourself before. AMP does this by adding new tags to HTML powered by its own JavaScript. Conversely, AMP restricts the way JavaScript is written to certain kinds of places. So you can't have too much of it. And so your page is more guaranteed to be quick. Actually, I'm giving a talk tomorrow on how to write JavaScript and AMP. Uh, please drop by, it's called Workerize, JS made easy, drop by and see it. Uh, anyway, so if your page follows the rules AMP sets out for speed and accessibility, then there are web crawlers out there, web spiders like Google's and Microsoft's that will find pages that are what we call valid AMP and stick those into an AMP cache, like Google's AMP cache. And this means that when you find these pages from search, like Google search, they get served from Google's servers very quickly. I can even show you this because we have this ability to do this. Uh, have you seen this before? If you have, then let me know in the chat here. We're gonna simulate a mobile device over here and go to google.com, which you have probably gone to before at some point. I look for something kind of newsy. What was this? This could be newsy. A class action suit against Google. <laughs> All right, this is a great topic. Let's see if we can find class action Google here and find news results. Look at this. This is a good result because it's not about current politics or about viruses. It's about Google. So notice on this carousel here of stories, all of these little guys here have little lightning bolts. Can you see that? In the right-hand corner. And those mean these are all AMP pages. See these things over here? If you scroll down the page, there are more results like this. So AMP launched first for news publishers. It was a way for publishers to get their content in front of users more quickly and more easily. Uh, <laughs> this is a great example. That's an example I've used of all time. Oh my God, look at that. I've got a Pixel 2 and it's pretty good, but well, anyway. So all these things here uh, are AMP articles. Now this is gonna change in the near future. Uh, you may have seen Google search announce that this was before reserved for AMP pages. At some point early next year, once things have calmed down in the world, Google will launch a thing that allows non-AMP pages that are as fast and have stable layout like AMP does, the same chance to get in this uh, top stories carousel. It hasn't happened yet because things are a little crazy out there right now. Uh, if you click on a results over here, it should live very quickly. That's pretty quick. Of course, we're on Wi-Fi here, so it's not so bad, but notice I can also drag from article to article over here. These things load pretty fast. Uh, it's because they're AMP pages and they load quickly. And also because in some cases, Google search has preloaded these pages in an iframe. So they appear immediately. They're in an invisible iframe, they appear right away. Microsoft, Bing does the same kind of thing. And that's kind of some reasons to use AMP. It's mostly about speed and uh, having a stable layout. It also can be convenient because as a developer, you're using these web components that already exist. You're not spending all your time finding third party third libraries to do image sliders or other kinds of things. It's all there with AMP. So we said these things already. I didn't say all of these things. Um, this AMP validator and uh, also the uh, Google cache, for example, will optimize your pages in various ways. It will compress images. It does various things to make the pages load more quickly. The AMP cache, we mentioned this before. We just said this, we said this also, it does things to make things faster, it adds source sets sometimes, which is nice. So how does AMP actually look in person? Here's AMP looks in person. This is an example of AMP in use. So this is a YouTube component. It will, surprise, 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 embed a YouTube video. And notice that the way you customize its behavior is by using HTML, not by using JavaScript. So uh, layout equals responsive on top there. That is not a standard HTML attribute, but AI AMP has its own layout system, which we'll try out in a few minutes. That allows you to specify how things work when the page changes size, or the container changes size. If you say layout equals responsive, AMP will automatically write for you with no extra work on your part. It will shrink and grow the, the actual component as this container shrinks and grows. 
So that's kind of nice. Uh, width and height are there. These are our standard HTML attributes. These are there because remember the AMP wants to have everything have its size declared in advance. That way things don't pop around when they load up. They have a space reserved for them on the screen. They pop into their spot and there you are. So they want you to specify width and height in most cases. And then finally, the part that's exciting over here, data-video ID. This is the ID of the YouTube video, as you might see somewhere in URL. Plug that in there, and then AMP will pop in a YouTube video. That's how AMP looks. Uh, any questions about all this so far? My very, very brief intro to AMP. There's more to it. There's a web stories thing based on AMP. There's AMP in email. There's AMP for ads. There's a lot to it, but this is the, the basis. The basics. Okay, let us go on. So you can make sites various different kinds of ways. If you have this conference today, you might be into doing it all yourself, writing your own JavaScript, your own CSS, your own HTML for everything. That's totally fine. If you're using a CMS, it's kind of the opposite approach. If you're using like WordPress, for example, or even more so something like Wix, you don't program anything. You might use plugins or drag and drop interfaces to move things around. AMP is somewhere in between all those things. AMP, you do your own CSS, you own HTML, but much less JavaScript. Again, we love JavaScript in the AMP world. AMP is written in JavaScript, but uh, your burden of JavaScript is much lower. Uh, Jory, the YouTube thing is a module. Basically, it's like a module. Yeah, it's a web component. It's kind of the same idea. It's just run by JavaScript, and it works uh, across browsers, by the way. It's all using current web standards. Uh, so uh, for this course over here today, we'll be using HTML. Uh, not much CSS and probably for today, no JavaScript. Go figure. So let's get started. Let's get our hands dirty over here. We're gonna use Glitch for this. You don't have to use Glitch, but it's pretty convenient because you can do online coding. You can also use your own web server on your own computer and your own IDE, your own editor. But with Glitch, you can do it all in a web interface. And also you can share your results with people here. So as you complete the exercises, you can pop the URL into the chat I can show it over here. We can all look at your work and admire your handiwork. If you have problems, you need to help debugging. We can also have you pop your URL into the chat and we can help you debug as well. So to start out over here, go to this link over here, glitch.com slash tilde showy hyphen way. In fact, if you can copy this into the chat, I'm gonna type it in over here. That'll help people get started. So if you can transfer this over, Shannon, Go there, glitch.com slash tilde showy dash way, which is probably now by Shannon's magic appearing in the chat. And here's how it will look, kind of like this. I think the guy from Glitch was talking today. I think Anil was here. And uh, you can see that every project in Glitch has a clever, cute name with a few different words with hyphens in between them, like showy dash way. You will see somewhere on the screen a button that says remix something. You might say click to remix, remix this project. It's different for me because I own the project. For me, it says um, remix this. I think for you, it's something different. If you click that button over there, you make your own copy of this project. It's a clever DJ way of saying, copy this project and now modify it however you want to. So again, go to glitch.com slash tilde showy hyphen way, and then remix this. And like magic, you'll see a new project popping up over here. Mine appears to be called Absorbed Magnetic Haze. Uh, there we go. If you have problems with this, let me know. If you've done this successfully, maybe say something in the chat like it worked. Yeah, they've had some issues with uh, the servers last couple of weeks. Once you've done this step over here, you should be all good to go. Remix to edit, thank you. Yeah. If it doesn't work, then just try it again. Thank you very much, Israel, for doing that. So if you get in there, if this works for you, you'll see a few things here on your left. These are the files you can use and folders you can use for the, your project. Uh, we're gonna be using only one of these files today. We're not using the server or the node stuff. If you just go into the public folder over here, open this up, you'll see some more things inside of there. These are all for the more advanced um, course, except for index.html. Click on that and we'll use this file and just this file 
for today. Are you guys in there? Hopefully at this point, you'll see a bunch of HTML, a bunch of starter code, a bunch of CSS. At the bottom, a very small amount of actual stuff that actually matters, which is the actual body of the document. So using Glitch, you can type in your code there. You can also very handily hit show and show the actual result of your code. If you go next to the code, that's fine. In a window has certain advantages, which I'll discuss in a minute. I'll choose in a new window. It'll then open a new tab over here where you can see this as it is so far. Are we mostly good so far? We're here. Assuming that you are all good and you're here, then we will go back over here and I'll show you how to find images. In the assets area over here are some static things, which are all images. To use the images here in your project, you just click on one of these things. It pops up into this light box experience. You see this long, long CDN thing over here. This is a unique link to this image. If you hit copy, you can then use that URL in your project. So again, any image over here, zoom in over here, like by clicking on it, copy the URL, and there you are. That's kind of how Glitch works. Um, good question. The lightning bolt, let's talk about that. That's a really good question. AMP has a few things that it does that it wants you to do for a valid AMP page. These aren't required if valid AMP isn't important to you. Valid AMP is only useful if you want to follow AMP's uh, kind of guidelines and rules for accessibility and speed, and also to be in the AMP cache, which actually is a pretty big advantage. AMP caches speed things up. So making valid AMP has certain advantages. And one of the things it wants you to do is add lightning bolt there, there after HTML. This is valid HTML, lightning bolt or the word AMP also works. And this just tells AMP that this is an AMP page. Some other things you'll notice over here, this meta tag, character set UTF-8, AMP wants that to have a standard character set. More importantly over here, this first uh, JavaScript that's loaded asynchronously, this is AMP's runtime that runs AMP itself. That's required for all AMP pages. And what else is over here? Some more things, a standard a viewport tag over here. I'm gonna skip discussing this link because it's kind of complicated. And notice also there's this boilerplate over here, AMP requires. This actually will hide the page until AMP loads up. So AMP can lay out the page for you and make things look all nice. And then notice also that all the CSS here in the style AMP custom tag. For valid AMP, it requires that all your CSS be here in line. The idea being that a single load from the browser of this page is all AMP needs to display your entire page. So there's no delays that can be caused by another request for your CSS. In a bigger project, you build this separately and then you copy it in. And at the bottom over here is your HTML. Any other questions or comments on these things over here? Before we get started, one more thing that could be useful for you is the AMP validator. Let's see if I have skipped some slides over here. We did this, we did this. This over here, this isn't required for the project, but it's kind of useful. There's a Chrome extension you can use that detects whether the pages are valid AMP or not. If you can see up in my screen over here at the top where all the little extensions are, I have a lot of them here, there's a little lightning bolt that's in gray. This is the AMP validator lightning bolt. It will turn green once on a valid AMP page. So to get this, I just tend to Google if you're using Chrome, you know, Chrome AMP validator, and then there it is. Again, not required for this, but it's kind of useful. I'm gonna copy the link over here into the chat, this very, very long, long link. Here it is. So let me show you how this looks in real life. Let's go to amp.dev, which is our documentation site, which my team and I work on. This is made with AMP, everything here is AMP. It's all valid AMP. And I can show you by looking in the console over here. Actually, we can look in the developer tools. We can look at the elements here. Let's make that a little bigger. You see over here, HTML AMP. You see some things over here like AMP user notification, a bunch of AMP things in here, AMP state, which is the state variable. It's an HTML, AMP lightbox. These are all AMP things. Notice also this is responsive and it works on a desktop or mobile equally well. Um, notice also the lightning bolt over there is green, which means it's valid AMP. Now to show this actually uh, not using the extension, I can also show it in the console 
if I instead of just saying m.ev, if I append to the end of my URL a hash development equals one and refresh the page, it will then give me debug information in the console. Uh, this actually is valid amp, it turns out. Let's go to a non valid amp page, one of my pages. <laughs> this is a tutorial I made, which is not valid amp. It's got some errors in it. And you can see this little one here in lightning bolts. I think Zoom will show you this pop up over here too. I think you see this error over here. This is because I use a relative URL, which throws an error because AMP wants you to use absolute URLs because if you're paid to serve from AMP cache, it may change the domain and relative URL could fail if you're on a different domain. If I then go to this over here and append development equals one, refresh the page, we will see in the console, the same error message. Anyway, it's a lot of setup over there, but that's all our setup we have to do. Any questions on all those things? I'm gonna keep on forging along here. So we said this before about AMP and let's start actually doing something over here. So our first component we're gonna use is AMP image. We're gonna start very, very small. AMP replaces one or two HTML tags with its own tags, not very many. For valid AMP, you're required to use AMP image instead of image. This way AMP can control when your image actually loads and how it loads. So two things that are important about this, there's more. One is that, again, it will reserve space for this on the screen so that it doesn't move things around when the image pops in. It will just pop into its spot and not have moved anything else around. Also, AMP automatically lazy loads. So if your image is somewhere down on the screen and the user hasn't scrolled up there yet, it won't load up until it's actually time to be seen by the user. So these things all come with uh, AMP automatically. For this and various other reasons, AMP wants you to use AMP image instead of using image. So let's try this out for a minute. Uh, oh, some more, some more components. You have Twitter, looks like other kinds of things. This we saw before. And also notice this, that some components require you to add your own JavaScript, a very small amount of JavaScript, like 8K or 10K, to run the actual component. That is so it is not loaded all at once for performance reasons. Anyway, AMP image. So our first goal is to replace the image tag in our project with AMP image. This is not a big project, but it's a good place to start. Notice that if you are over here in your project, you will see an image tag. So our goal is to replace this with AMP image. So you now must do this. Uh, the idea is to replace it with AMP image, to give it a width and a height, keep the source as it is. If you make it 640 by 480, it will still look nice. Width of 640, height of 480. You have to then close your AMP image tag and you're done. That is our first exercise. If you get confused at any point, which you might, then you should look at documentation site because it's full of documentation. So let's say you're forgetting how AMP image actually works. You can look at the documentation site over here. You can search for AMP image and there's a component up there and there's attributes you can use to customize it, like the source, the source set, for example. And there's also an example up here of AMP image in action. There it is with height source and you close the tag. Actually, the example here is kind of better. That was a more complicated example of the fallback image. This is a good example. So anyway, the first exercise you have is to add, or sorry, change your image tag to AMP image. So I'll let you do that. I would do this myself also while you're doing it, my own copy of this, and then we'll, we'll kind of reconnect in about two minutes and see how we've done. If you have questions about this, then please just stick them in the chat. But I'll mute for the next two minutes or so. Oh, before I mute also, if you get this and it looks good, then please post your glitch URL in the chat. We can all see what you've done.
when you get it, by the way, you'll notice that your page is now a valid AMP. There was an error before, and now lightning bolt should be green. Okay, have people got this so far? If you've got this, please put your link in the chat over here. If you aren't doing this, <laughs> if no one's doing this, let me know. We can do some sort of uh, other thing instead of this workshop. All right, Shannon's got something there. This is the most complex word I've ever seen over here in, oh, sorry, Shannon's actually posting, okay. It's very complex words over here. Shannon, uh, Emerald Saber Diasha. Nice, this is good, this is valid AMP. I see a few coming in, also valid AMP. If I go to your source over here, I see that looks good. AMP image and it's closed. All right. Let's see one more over here. Uh, you've chosen cheese and you've got two images here. You've gone to a more advanced, clearly advanced thing over here. Uh, very good. All right. So this is successful. Now notice if I go to one of these things over here, let's go to mine instead of yours for a moment. Uh, actually, let me show the solution first of all before I go somewhere and show you something else because you didn't get it. It simply looks like this, amp image and the source height and the width and close it and you're done. Here's that on a lovely slide. Amp image, source, width and height and close it and you're done. So notice though, if you look at this here in a mobile simulator, like I will now, it has a bit of a problem. The image goes off the side of the screen. The image actually is not responsive. We didn't say responsive, so it's just whatever an image usually would be, and it goes off the side. If I go to the responsive mode here in DevTools, I can see here it is, but as the screen gets smaller, it does nothing. So now, as the next step, add to your AMP image one more attribute. Add layout equals responsive. Is that here somewhere? Yeah, add here this one extra attribute Layout equals responsive. And then see if it becomes responsive. I'm gonna take this out of the screen you can see and do it myself too. Did that work? I will show you mine over here. Here it is. Look at that. 
it's responsive to a certain extent. On screen's very, very small. I think our CSS makes it not actually responsive anymore. But for any device you could have in the world that exists currently, it is responsive. And it's just AMP adding things in there to make it responsive automatically. Any questions so far? Let us go on here to the next stuff. There are more ways you can use layout. There's a fixed one, there's intrinsic, there's responsive. We just discussed there's a variety of layouts that come with AMP. You can actually look at this over here. There's a nice, nice graphic that somewhere over here, one of these pages. Uh, is that the one there? There should be an example somewhere. There it is. So you can see some things over here, keep the height fixed, but the width will go automatically. It's a flex box one. Fix where nothing changes. Fill where the can, children fill up the size of the container. We just did responsive over there. There's various layout kinds here for various different kinds of needs. All that's just part of AMP. So let's go on from there. You saw YouTube before, now let's do it ourselves. So YouTube is a bit different because it involves, I see a question over here. Uh, I think of the entire screen width, the responsive, um, I'm curious to see your example over there and see what's happening. If that was what you wanted it to happen or not wanted it to happen. It could be that if you have the CSS at a certain way, the responsive thing might be unable to make things responsive after a certain point because the CSS will then hit your CSS in some way that's perhaps unpredictable. Send me your link though, if you can, I can take a look at that too. AMP YouTube is not much more complicated. Just one extra thing you have to do. You're still adding your height your width and your layout type, but then you add the ID for the video, and that's it. And also YouTube, AMP YouTube is a component that requires its own JavaScript. So you've got to also find the script tag that you use. So to find that, go to amp.dev and look up AMP YouTube. These things here all follow a certain similar formula, but at first they're easy to find here on amp.dev. AMP YouTube, the script over here is required to make it run. Add this somewhere in the head, you should be good. You see also examples over here in case you get confused about how this is supposed to work. So the idea over here is to add this at the bottom of your site. The size will look good on your screen there, 480 by 270. This video ID will look nice, but any video you wanna use is fine. To find a video ID on YouTube, you go to YouTube, look up some sort of talk or video or whatever you want to. Oh, it's Joe Biden. And you'll see over here this V equals something. This is the ID of the video. So now go ahead and try this, but add this YouTube video to your site. I will do this too. And I'll look at the example that I just got sent here in the chat as well. But for now, add this video there. Yeah, sorry, I'm running a workshop. <laughs> I have some visitors up here. If you get this, feel free to add your link to the chat. And don't forget the, uh, the script over here, as I just did.
uh, somebody coming through. I was looking at your responsive images over here, but let me stop doing that and uh, show some of these examples of people who are succeeding, such as Flaxen Holy Howler. Sounds like it's sort of influenced by Harry Potter. Oh, this has never happened before ever in a workshop. <laughs> this is my first time getting rickrolled. I'm very embarrassed by this experience. Actually, my, my son now loves this song and he plays it. <laughs> you're you're, you're uh, collaborating here. He plays it actually for fun. Uh, thanks for a different one here at least. That's uh, interesting looking too. Nice taste in videos, people. All right, so well done. YouTube. Let's just uh, do that over here. Again, not so complicated. If you chose responsive layout, then you'll get it again, shrinking and growing with your container there, which is kind of handy. Let me show that over here real quick. My own project, there it is. And hopefully this will be responsive. Yeah, look at that. The video is responsive. Okay, shall we go on? Any more questions? I was looking at the, at the responsive images there and you, I know you put a PX there in the HTML, which I never ever do. I don't know if that causes anything weird to happen or not. I'm looking at that now on my screen to see if the PX is, if they're moved, if anything changes. Uh, but it might not change because it already is loaded up. I've noticed your images there take up the entire width of the screen. I think they might actually do that as part of the responsiveness and we take up their whole container size. So even if the image is very small, here I'll show this over here. My impression of the responsive images is that they take up the whole container allotted to them. So here's your images here. Here's the div that they're in. Notice it's the entire screen. So the images here get resized to fill the entire container. I think this is working as planned. So actually the width and height don't, don't get kept. If you had layout equals, uh, I think, fixed, it would then just use the size you provided. If it's responsive though, it will try to size it along with the container. So I think this is working as expected. Let me go on here a little bit with the next exercise. There's of course your script you need to have. So finding components is also important. Documentation we've seen before, you can use this to find the components you want to use and figure out how to actually use them. This is a bit more elaborate. We're gonna add now an image carousel, which is also called an image slider sometimes. That thing where you can show various images in a single area on the screen and swipe between images with your fingers or click on buttons to change the images. Also call it a carousel sometimes. And AMP has one called AMP carousel that allows this to happen automatically. So you look at documentation and you say, okay, what does this thing do? How do I use it? How do I customize it? Various questions like that. How do I style it? Let's go back to amp.dev again and look up carousel or amp carousel. You'll see here the documentation page for that. There it is. There's actually two versions of this one over here. And you see this looks like most things in amp. It's got a script to use to make it work. And here's an example, width and height as always, layout if desired. And if you want, some extra things are there. You can choose the type of it. Type can be either slides, which means you show one slide at a time, or a carousel, where you see all the slides, you can, scroll, you can kind of scroll between them. There is also an autoplay attribute. There's a possible delay. You can loop. There's various things like that. So customizing this, you can do it with JavaScript if you want to, but it's simplest to use HTML instead, which we'll do just now to customize our carousel. So the carousel can contain anything it wants to, you know, text, videos, images are pretty commonly used. So we'll do this example over here. We're gonna kind of do this sort of thing with a carousel full of images. Let's go ahead over here. We just discussed all of these things. 
Here's an example, as we just saw, imp carousel with the usual attributes with height and so on, contains different kinds of things, which are things in the carousel. And let's try it out over here. So the goal is to use the documentation to see how the carousel works and add our own carousel of images to our site. Remember to find images in Glitch. You go to your project and go to Assets and click on something over here. And there it is. And there's the URL you can use. So given all that, your assignment is to add a carousel wherever you want to. Above the video looks kind of nice. Make it responsive if you want to. Choose type slides, so one slide appears at a time. Make it so it loops back so that it never stops. The size of 4, 12 by 3, and 9 will look good. These images here are already kind of good for that size. It listed over here, but any images can work. Anything in your Glitch project or on the internet you want to use will be fine. Does that make sense? So go ahead and try this out. If you have questions, try the documentation or just ask the questions in the chat. I'll do this also on my side at the same time. I will now mute. We already got one here. Let <laughs> me uh, finish mine over here first. I'm getting behind you. Okay, mine works. Oh, you already have done this. Look at this. I see at least three. Nice. Oh, look at this. You have fourth image. Extra credit. <laughs> They're even lined up A, B, C, and D. Very nice. <laughs> I see that you've made your mice now all fit into the same area. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is easy, isn't it? That's kind of the idea is that those things that would seem complicated are now easy. And if you use like Next.js, there's also a nice AMP integration with Next.js that makes this even easier. You can make React style AMP components to make it even simpler. Uh, the question about telemetry on the tags, a control on the events through these tags. What does that question mean, a control on the events? Maybe explain to me in the chat what you mean by that question. In the meantime, these all look great. We've got some uh, pretty quick people here. We're going pretty fast. We can maybe go even further here. I think I have two more things to do 
one is simple and one is more elaborate and gets into actually event handlers and those kinds of things. Ah, the loop attribute, yeah. Here's the solution, by the way. If you didn't get it, there is AMP carousel. The key is to choose type equals slides to have that one slide at a time look. Just put the word loop in there and it loops. There's your images and you're all done. And of course, adding the script there will make it actually work. So to find new components, you can also search for these things in the AMP uh, reference on amp.dev. So there's how that looks. Let's look at that together for a minute. AMP components, you see over here all these things on the left-hand side. These are all the components AMP offers. By the way, because we're at OpenJS, you can make more of these things. You have to actually, uh, it's an open source project. You have to you know, get permission to make these things and make a proposal and go through a design uh, process. But adding components is not so hard, really. The thing is that everyone can use them out there in the world. They can't just be my company's component customized for just me. That has to be a thing everyone can use everywhere. But notice that various companies have made their own components. There's a bunch of Facebook things over here. There's an amp just for GitHub or GIST if you want for GitHub. There's a Hulu player, all kinds of things. There's things for forms, for fonts. There's animation things that are quite nice. All kinds of options exist. So uh, I see in the chat over here to know if you're out navigating through images or not. You can use analytics in AMP, if that was your question. You can use analytics and you can certainly send uh, pixel out whenever a person clicks on a button or whenever they change images, for example. Analytics are a whole other complex topic of their own. But as with all things in AMP, they're done through a component called AMP Analytics. And there's various vendors that support AMP Analytics and you can figure it with JSON. If that isn't enough, you can, again, add your own JavaScript. It just won't be valid AMP anymore. But if your goal is to make a faster page, you can still add some more JavaScript in there and do that. You'll just miss out on the advantages of the cache. Anyway, finding components, look in the reference. So you've seen this before. There also are, oh, nice, we can mention this too. Examples in here with code. There's a little playground in here. Let's say we're back on the app carousel and want to try out some possible different things. There's a link over here to the playground where you can then modify the code over here, however you like and see the result over here. So I think this is now supposed to be a responsive type equals slides. If I chose loop over here, I should then loop forever. And autoplay was a thing too, right? Let's try autoplay. Oops, spelling it right also matters. Autoplay. And we got the arrows appear or not. Uh, there you go, it's autoplaying. Uh, question, is there an open component repository that's moderated by your team? That's a good question. The AMP team wants to be involved in making new components. So again, you can make an issue on GitHub. People will comment on it in various ways. They might not like the idea if it's gonna be, I think maybe breaks AMP's performance guarantees. They might like it a lot. But one of our big goals is to get new contributors to AMP, not always from Google. And we actually have a uh, collaborators event happening with OpenJS on Thursday and Friday. You should, st you should stop by and uh, go to some talk to some people and see if you wanna contribute to AMP. I can show you that real quick on our friend GitHub. The AMP project has its own account, AMP HTML. This is the repository over here. There it is. And it's full of issues as you can see about all kinds of things. People want to fix uh, something about web stories, something about AMP ads and non-AMP pages, which is also allowed. I don't know why it's there. Some things here are done for performance. Uh, a question, do you have to do two versions of your site, a desktop version and an AMP version? That is commonly done because when AMP first came out, that was required, but not recommended if you can avoid it because it means you have two versions of your site. That's kind of a hassle. So the goal of AMP when it first came out was it was called Accelerated Mobile Pages. And if you're a publisher, you had a desktop version of your page and an AMP mobile version of your page. And they're linked together by this tag. Let me show you how this actually looks. In fact, it's still part of AMP today. And still AMP is most commonly used. Let me get my project back over here. So notice I didn't mention this before. This link rel equals canonical over here. The way this was done was you had two different pages. 
and use a link tag so that search engines would know they're the same thing. The AMP HTML, the AMP page, would have link equals canonical, that link to the non-AMP page, and non-AMP page, I link all because the AMP HTML, linking back to your AMP page. So you had this desktop and mobile version together. Uh, this is still commonly done, but it's kind of a hassle. We think now that it's better to just use AMP for everything because it's just simpler than maintaining two versions of the same page all the time. One thing you can do if AMP doesn't work for all the pages on your site is you can make certain pages AMP, certain pages not AMP. So it's often used for like home pages, for landing pages, for commonly used pages, for pages that are simpler. And then as you get to more elaborate things like making purchases, for example, or more elaborate interactions, you often leave AMP behind in some way. <clears throat> Here's an example of that. Let's see if I can find this. This is, we can find this. This is AliExpress, you know, Alibaba the very, very large Chinese company, the big e-commerce company. Let's go to their mobile site over here. So this was once actually an AMP site before. Uh, let's stay here. It's no longer AMP, they've changed non-AMP. You can see over here is normal looking HTML and so on. But if you go to click on one of these categories over here, you get an AMP page. So for them, they wanted certain features on the homepage AMP didn't seem to provide. They left AMP behind. The category pages are still AMP. And that's fine, they're all just web pages over here. So if I go to a product page, it may be AMP or not AMP, I don't even remember what it is now. We are still AMP over here on the product pages. So AMP is often used for different kinds of things, different kinds of ways. Um, it's usually easier, again, just to make it so it's AMP all the time. If I go to this example over here, let's see if I can find one more spontaneously here. This one I just saw recently. This is a French site called Red. And it's AMP, you can see over here, all the AMP stuff, Lightning Bolt and so on. And it's desktop and it's mobile. It's all AMP. The other pages frequently are not that way. Let's go to, for example, Google search again and look for news articles again about maybe <laughs> whatever the suit was about pixels. That was a good example. Class action Google. All right, let's go over there to the nine to five Google page. This here is an AMP page. It's appearing actually in the AMP viewer. So let's take it out of the AMP viewer. Let's just look at the AMP version. Taking it out of the Google's AMP viewer. Here's the AMP page. You can see again in dev tools if I zoom here, it is an AMP page. If I go to the desktop version, it probably won't be AMP anymore at all. If I take out this word AMP at the end of the URL, I'm betting I'll just get, yeah, non-AMP page. So it looks similar. It probably has more features. It probably has more, honestly, more tracking things on it because those are what people often have more trouble with AMP is getting all their tracking pixels and things on there. But yeah, so this is a page which is AMP on mobile and not AMP on desktop. Anyway, uh, AngularJS. You can use AngularJS, but you probably wouldn't want to because, well, you can do Angular on the server side if you want to. If Angular is on the client side, it's gonna be a lot of JavaScript and things Angular does, AMP will do anyway. Although if you have a lot of complicated interactions on your screen, uh, AMP gets a little more cumbersome at a certain point. Uh, it's a good question. You come to the talk tomorrow, I'll be talking about JavaScript and AMP, how that works. We can discuss it today too if you want to. It's called AMP Script. It lets you actually do JavaScript and AMP within a web worker. But usually if you have a complicated uh, front end framework, it's not a thing you use with AMP most of the time. I do recommend for more complicated interactions within AMP is to use something small like Preact, which uses very little JavaScript and has very small bundles. That's a whole other topic we can discuss if you want to. Uh, limitations like animations and complex styles. Uh, AMP has a limitation that if you use valid AMP, then your CSS can't be over 75K, so it isn't too slow. So there's a CSS limit for AMP, for valid AMP. If the valid AMP doesn't matter to you, it doesn't matter. Animation is actually really good in AMP. AMP has some components like AMP animation that support really advanced animations. Actually, I'll show you an example of that. If I go to amp.dev over here, I can see a couple of articles that people have made that have nice animations. Let's see, use cases. This is a demo e-commerce site that I made with some friends. 
But this over here has nice examples of animations. It uses amp position observer and amp animation, which uses uh, jump position observers to do some nice things as you, as you scroll down the page, animations trigger. Let's look at this over here. So as I scroll down this page here, I don't know how it looks over Zoom, but all kinds of cool things happen to the page. The graphs appear and things get bigger and smaller and so on and so forth. Uh, AMP really encourages animations that are already uh, CPU, uh, not CPU intensive rather, that are hardware accelerated. But you can do all kinds of cool things with AMP if you want to. There she goes. It may look strange on Zoom though. So if you want to look at this yourself, then here's a link for that. Uh, is AMP supported in all browsers? Uh, very much so. The AMP team makes sure that every browser with a market share of 1% or more, that AMP works in the last two versions of the browser uh, flawlessly. It also works in other browsers too, but they don't guarantee perfection. So it'll work on, you know, IE like nine, for example, but maybe not as nicely as on Edge, for example. IE 11 is supported, yeah, Firefox, Safari, all the major browsers it's at a support. It is not by any means a thing for Chrome or for Google products. The app team wants to make sure that it isn't just a Google product, but a thing for the whole web to use, even if a lot of Googlers do work on it. So we have more questions here. Do you want to do more exercises or answer more questions? We can do both those things, of course. Let's go back and do one more exercise and then talk about AMP script a little bit for those who are curious about that. And then we'll go, if we have time, to do the final exercise, which involves making an interactive menu using uh, AMP events and actions. So let's go back over here. Let's go away from GitHub. If you want to get involved, then please message me, you know, privately and say hello and I'll tell you how to come by on Thursday and Friday. So back over here, and by example, this one's pretty easy actually. Uh, this is about how to find a component. So now that you're more advanced at your AMP usage, I want you to find this by yourself. So this is a component that just lets you add social sharing links simply. So I want you to add to the bottom of your page over here, some social sharing links. Look at the docs, find the right component to do it. If you use this div with a class social bar, make the size of each button 44 by 44, it will look all pretty because our CSS we have in this project makes that possible. So try that and then we'll get back to more questions. Uh, that is correct. AMP Social Share is the name of the component. If you get it, then let me know.
Does anyone have this so far? Got one. And drum roll, please. Die of cute mouse eating cheese. Yeah, look at that. Very good. Of course, let's see this video here, too. What does this phrase die of cute mean, though? It's kind of concerning. All right, that's that's cute. Here's my project over here. My four buttons in the bottom. If you didn't get this yet, it's pretty straightforward. Once you get the right component, I use this div class equals social bar, and then four amp social share components, and the height and the width. And there they were. There's of course various ways to do this. You can also use a link, you know, an SVG image or whatever, but this works nicely. Here it is on the screen. Any questions about that? We got one more. <laughs> we'll ignore the video over there. It is not about a song, really. Just the way he dances is really disturbing. Apparently, they got there and nothing was really planned. He just got there and kind of did this little dance spontaneously. And they shot this in a day, and there it was. There's the buttons. Maybe even change the CSS some to make it so they're further apart. So back to questions over here. Uh, how much control does AMP provide over uh, to developers like debugging and testing and so on, it provides you the same control as any other you know JavaScript framework that exists out there. It's mostly up to you. Um, you have to debug in the usual way that you would do testing. I mean, the back end belongs to you. The front end is what you use AMP for. So any kind of usual methods you have to get telemetry on users, you know, do staging and production environments, whatever else you usually do. You can still do. Um, it gets more elaborate when it comes to using more elaborate AMP components because some involve storing data in AMP state variables. And there's ways to find those things and see what they have. And there's techniques for getting more or less warnings or error messages. Any other questions that are coming up? Let's do one more exercise, but first let's talk about AMP script for a few minutes. AMP script, I have this talk on it tomorrow, uh, which I can summarize for you <laughs> pretty quickly. Uh, it's basically a way of using JavaScript in workers. So the idea is that if you know about web workers, they've been around for a long time, but aren't used very much because web workers lack access to the DOM. Web workers can only talk to the main thread by passing messages back and forth. It's actually is good for AMP because AMP wants to control the main thread. It doesn't want you to have JavaScript that you run yourself that will then take over the main thread and maybe make things very slow. So for AMP workers are a wonderful solution. And that you take JavaScript, lets you run this in a worker, and then AMP can always disallow mutations that would block the screen in some way or make things change too much. Uh, it can't do the things that all of JavaScript does because it's essentially simulating JavaScript's DOM API within its own JavaScript. So let me show you an example, actually. This is pretty abstract. I can probably find, if I look really hard over here, my talk for tomorrow and show you some slides from that and show you some code because that'll make it really clear, I think. Let me see if I can find that for you. Hold on a second. Uh, I think this must be it. Yeah. 
No, that isn't it. That's so disappointing. Let me find it real quick. So I can't actually easily show you my code. Let me just pull this up over here. Okay, here it comes. What is the release cycle of these components? I forget, they changed it recently. It was every week or two, and they then made it a little bit quicker so they could turn out new versions more quickly. They have a whole series of different releases and ways that they work, and there's a whole page on GitHub that describes all these things. All right, so uh, yeah, web workers. So this is my talk for tomorrow. Summarize in about two minutes. Web workers are this thing. Isn't that nice? But they only pass messages back and forth from the main thread. All code runs in its own thread. Workers lack access to the DOM. So AMP script makes this possible. This AMP script component by giving you this thing called worker DOM, which is an open source library wrapped in AMP script. What this does is it passes messages back and forth between the main thread and the worker. So it looks kind of like this in the end, finally. Use a component called AMP script and the DOM inside the AMP script over there, like this hello over here, it gets passed to the worker. The worker then has the stuff that simulates the parts of the DOM API. So you can then in your own script over here, do normal DOM API things and modify the API, add event listeners, and do things like that, as you will. So there's an example over there. It's just a hello world example where you find the first H1 and add the word world to it. You can even see that in action. If I can find it over here. So there's hello world in AMP script. This example is not exciting, it just adds a world to hello. Let's do the one with the button here. This is a lot more exciting, I promise you. Hello button adds a button here, which then adds stuff to the DOM. Actually, I've got over here, looks like I've got a breakpoint set in this one. <laughs> you can see how there it is, magically. All the stuff over here about worker DOM. Actually, this is probably too small to see. Let's make this bigger. So all this worker DOM stuff's in here, and then there's actually your, your JavaScript at the bottom. And there, this document here actually is, it's not the real document, but a simulation done by AMP script. With all these extra things here with names like 7, 8, 9, 10, and then actual DOM methods and properties and so on. And then it does the actual work over there. You can find this here in this worker. There's the AMP script we're looking at now. So anyway, if we do this, it will then actually magically, if I, sorry, unpause, add these things over here. Let's remove this breakpoint. Uh, let's do this again. So a basic example over there, uh, there's AMP script. And then finally, if you wanna use a framework of some sort, you can. They're often a little bit too big to fit within limitations that AMP provides, unless you use things like Preact. Preact makes things very small. So I have an example over here using Preact doing the same kind of thing like hello world and the people that make worker dom and amp script also contribute to preact and know very well the api that the the preact uses to make its changes to the dom so it's very well supported if you want to use the framework preact is a great choice you can also use react or Vue or something else just the bundles get sort of big sometimes which may be contrary to the spirit of amp uh, okay that's amp script in a very small nutshell if you want to try script out, I've got an awesome new tutorial on it that you could try, which I will now look for you for, look for, for you on amp.dev. Everything seems to live. Amp script. If you're curious about these things here, try this over here if you want to try this out. It's kind of neat. It isn't as convenient as writing JavaScript, you know, just kind of in the rest of the world, but it does this in an interesting way that makes it very, very, very performant. Uh, back to the questions here. What is the adoption rate of AMP? AMP is adopted pretty widely. They used to count the number of AMP pages out there. They stopped counting at a certain point because counting is kind of hard. 
Like what is a page? You know, what is a unique page? A couple of years ago, there were about 55 million domains using it and they had like 6 billion pages. That's pr increased since then, I'm pretty sure, because more companies are using it and because also the WordPress plugin has gotten more and more used and WordPress is a very big part of the web. But a lot of major publishers use it in many countries. It depends where you are. Like in the US, Western Europe, most major publishers use AMP. In other countries, some places, it's more used for e-commerce. Like we have examples from Brazil and India and South Africa that are e-commerce sites that use AMP. There's uh, various places that use it out there. If you're curious to see more examples of AMP in the world, I've got some here. This is a nice one from a company called Want Mobile that makes a lot of AMP sites. It's actually an AMP PWA combination. It's an e-commerce site that has a progressive web app and also AMP all together. Somewhere in here, there'll be AMP. If I can find it. Uh, I'm getting a bit tired here, clearly. I'm not really finding things. <laughs> Somewhere over here. Oh, hold on. That's why it's not AMP, because it's actually this is a paired approach. It's AMP on mobile, I think, not on desktop. Yeah, OK, there we are. Here's the mobile version. Over here, this is AMP. So you see it in various places in the world for various different kinds of uses. A lot of publishers use it still. A lot of uh, paired AMP where it's, again, an AMP page on mobile, not on desktop, but it just depends where you are. Whoops. Let's find one from somewhere else in the world for a variety. There's Priceline. This one over here, I think this is AMP all the time. Yeah, this is AMP desktop and mobile. It looks better on mobile, I think. This here is Uno TV. I think it's from Mexico. Also an AMP site. Any other questions about all of these things before doing our final exercise of the day? If not, let us do one final exercise. Let's close some of these links over here. So, okay, AMP. I think I said these things before all about valid AMP. We've gone over these things as part of the actual discussion we had so far. CSS, how it works. Why valid AMP is useful. And now let us build a menu. So a menu, sorry about these boxes that have appeared here somehow. So it's not unlike things you've done before when you use uh, event handlers and you use actions that result from events in AMP. For example, let's say you were using good old fashioned jQuery and wanted to have a button you clicked on that uh, took this div and hit it. So you would use like on and click equals the dollar sign, which I love when it first came out. And then you get the div itself by putting its selector there in quotes. And you can grab the, grab the element that way from the DOM. I use a method like hide to hide it. So like button on click, dollar sign, pound warning, hide. AMP is kind of like that. It's not dissimilar. So this is an example of the same thing in AMP. If you want to hide a div, you'd go by the div ID and you would say button on on attribute equals tap colon warning dot hide. How this looks over here is again, on attribute is used. The first thing there in quotes is tap, which is the name of the event. AMP takes uh, the click event and you know, other kinds of events that involve touch and combines those for you into a tap event. And then an ID of an element like warning, then a dot and an action like hide. That's how it works. There it is. So we'll try this ourselves now. We're gonna add a menu to our site with AMP events and actions. It's gonna involve <coughs> a component that makes this menu appear and disappear. And then we'll use actions and events to make two buttons work. One is the hamburger menu itself, and two is the close. I have to cough for a minute. I'm gonna mute while I cough, pardon me.
So embarrassing. I have some water, fortunately. Anyway, we won't discuss these too formally over here, but we'll just use these kind of intuitively to make our menu work, to have the buttons that open and close the menu actually do something. We'll use a component called AMP sidebar, whose, uh, whose uh, content is hidden until it's opened up. You can use various actions to open up uh, a sidebar with a given ID, like open or toggle. You can close it with the action called close. That makes sense. Let's look at this in the documentation for a minute here. Let's look up AMP sidebar because that'll give us what we're looking for here. Not AMP script, but AMP sidebar. And of course you can use AMP script to do this instead by adding JavaScript to add event handlers and so on and so forth. Uh, AMP sidebar has a script you use over there and then it's got things you can use to customize it like uh, where side it comes from, left or right side, uh, attributes like this. And there's an example here probably somewhere. There's an example, for example, um, with AMP you want, sidebar, you wanna have layout equals no display because at first, when you first load it up, it should be invisible. You can choose what side you want it to go from and it just contains whatever it contains. It's just a, basically a component that contains HTML, which will then appear or vanish as sidebar appears or vanishes. And then for the events and actions themselves, here's some examples over here. So here they have a button that actually shows the sidebar, button on equals tap sidebar. That's actually the default action. Sidebar dot open would also work, or sidebar dot toggle. And then to close it, you use a uh, close event. So if you're stuck, look there at the documentation for sidebar. You can also look up actions and events, which discusses this in more detail. I'm sure I can find it by this kind of search, actions and events. You see here the syntax of an event name, colon, the DOM element, rather the ID of the DOM element, and then a dot method name and so on and so forth. I'll put this in the chat in case it's useful. So that's our assignment here, is to use the documentation to see how this works, and then add in the header a div with the little hamburger menu that toggles the menu. If you use class nav bar trigger, it will look nice because our CSS does that. Uh, add the sidebar component right below the body. The amp sidebar component works best if it's a direct child of a body because the amp sidebar will add this uh, opaque thing over the whole screen and it looks good if it's just over the parent. So I recommend adding it right below the body tag. Use ID sidebar one and class sidebar. It'll look nice that way. Um, then the sidebar has a nav element, like any kind of menu you might have in the world. It's got an unordered list with some things in it. And then you add another div that's an X button, which closes the menu when it's tapped. And I will just for your uses, I will actually copy in here the little characters here that you can use for the buttons. I'm just gonna find it over here myself. So here I'm gonna put in the chat, the hamburger menu button. Now this is more complicated than we did before. So if you get stuck, please feel free to say this in the chat because I didn't tell you how to actually do it. I just told you kind of a lot about how to do it, how to find the rest of the things you need. Where is the X? Here's an X. This is a nice closed X over here in your chat. Does that make sense? It's hard because I can't see any of you. But if you have any questions about this last exercise, please post them in the chat. And while you're doing this, I will also mute myself and I will also do it.
I was doing this myself. I see here a question. Where do you paste the buttons? Oh, I put the two buttons in the chat. Hopefully you got those two things uh, from Shannon. I pasted a little hamburger menu uh, extended character and a big X, if that was the question. If that wasn't the question, then let me know. Oh, I will paste that here again. Let me know if you get that. Can I do that? Does that help? Ah, okay. <laughs> all right. Did the last things all not just go to the wrong person? I was pasting more links in here for the last little while. I'll paste in some more links then. So this was a link to the JavaScript, the app script tutorial. This was the link to actions and events. Sorry, we had a communication breakdown here on our side. And here was the link also to that nice article with the cool animations. What else could I have missed here back in my link pasting? Ah, uh, now I see why I couldn't ever communicate with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to paste some more things in the chat now. But uh, if you have more questions, then please let me know. I see a question. Can we attach HTML events on these tags? Uh, you can handle events. AMP passes down most events to you. Not all events, but most of them. It doesn't pass along hover, for example, because it doesn't work on mobile phones. But the list over there is available at the actions and events site over here. Actions and events page, I guess. It lists various events you can use and actions you can take on those events. So also um, various components throw their own events. Like for example, for inputs, if there was a change event, carousels throw a slide change event, there's things like that. To add your uh, standard HTML, uh, events and event listeners, you can use AMP script to do that too.
if you want some encouragement here, I'll show you that it can be done because there it is. As with various things in the world, AMP isn't really hard. It just requires getting used to how you do things. Once you do, you can make sites really quickly. That's kind of the power of AMP. Although your customization is limited without using AMP script, you can do pretty standard interactions pretty fast after a while. Uh, is there a guide about CSS styles? CSS belongs to you completely. So yeah, it's just your CSS. Like with all HTML, all web pages, that you control completely. How are folks doing out there? We're running out of time. We have about 10 minutes left. So I can always give you some hints. Or we could all have more discussion about this. And all this content's available online too, by the way. Because things are available online in general. If I go here. I'll paste this in the chat also. What we did today as part of the courses. This uh, menu thing here is actually an intermediate course because it's more advanced skill. So if you go there, you'll find the menu stuff we just did. And you can go beyond that to other advanced kinds of AMP things. Is anyone close to having this? If you have something that kind of resembles it, you could show off your link. Otherwise, this is what I did. Oh, you've almost got it. <gasps> Let's give this one more minute. This is pretty good because this is your first end page ever. And you're making interactions. That's pretty quick. Uh, 
All right. We have Wendy Lovely Tracker. Hey. <laughs> okay. That's pretty good. The X is, you know, the bottom, it doesn't do anything, but the menu totally appears. So one of the buttons totally works. So why doesn't button number two work? Shall we see what's happening over here? Ah, tap sidebar one. If you do sidebar one dot close or dot toggle, it'll probably close it. You are so close to being there. We've got some uh, errors here, but um, yeah, I guess the amp sidebar wants to be, wants to have this no display layout because that guarantees it won't get shown. I guess container seems to work, it just throws an error message. And these roll and tab index things here for accessibility. Okay, you're saying it's updated now. Yeah, you're a star, there it is. All right, congratulations. Wait, one more has come in also. Oh, look at this. It's in the right spot even. It's on the left of the Chico Cheese Bicycles. There's an X. Yeah, this is all good. The only difference from mine, I think, is that I have a probably a different area, which maybe you get to CSS activated. So my sidebar is under body exactly because that's where it likes to be. I think yours were all in the same places. And then I have my classical sidebar, the div classic nav bar trigger for the button over here. And then the header is right below that, the class header bar class nav, nav bar trigger, all those things there. And uh, what else am I missing over here? Yeah, there's the X, right? There's the X button here. And there's the other button over here. And I see Emerald Saber Diasha. Well, you get, wow. How'd you get two lines in there? I've never seen this before. Oh, it's an equal sign. <laughs> I, I love your solution to use an equal sign. Yeah, it's like a, a two-third hamburger menu. I didn't know how you'd done two lines. Equals. So let's look at this on the big screen here. There's, again, the header. Inside there, the div with the hamburger menu. And then the magical thing, on equals tap sidebar one dot toggle has seem to have gotten there. The amp sidebar is there. I use side equals left. I use the classical sidebar for my CSS to activate. And then the div with the X in it, with this uh, tap sidebar one toggle, it could have been closed just as well. And a menu content. That's really about it. And then of course, having the JavaScript snippet there in the head to make it all work. Uh, I'm going to skip the rest of this stuff over here because it's kind of more about AMP. Do you have any other questions or comments about anything of any sort? For those who are curious, let me try to find the link. Oh, I don't, I don't get to figure this out. I don't know what this is. Uh, Shannon, is there a way to easily figure out how to show up on Thursday? or Friday for the Collaborator Summit, does it, require, does it require registering for that separately? Ah, okay, so it requires other registration to attend the Thursday and Friday Collaborator Summit. If you wanna come by and look, about, look at uh, how to contribute to AMP, then also you can message me separately on Twitter or on the, uh, this tribe social chat thing over here. I'll be around. If there are no further questions, thanks for trying this out. It was fun for me. Hopefully it was fun for you. You did some amazing things in only less than two hours, hour and three quarters, some incredible things. Thanks a lot.